again, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Female Empowered Podcast. I'm your host, Krista Gurka. And today we're going to talk about a really basically in layman's terms, how to pay your team. So last week, if you're following these episodes in sequential order, we talked about hiring and how to attract the great talent. And so this is a little bit of a follow-up episode where we talk about how to pay your team, how to address compensation structures for instructors, staff members, support staff, managerial staff, including how to transition to different compensation models, okay? and how to discuss financial realities with team members. This is a huge thing. So having competitive pay is something that is lucrative and enticing to attract new people, but you also have to make sure that it coincides with the financial solvency of the business. And so oftentimes when we get people into our Fitbit Foundations program or our inner circle, the very first thing we look at is the structure of their business. So we look at the way that, um, the way that my program, my mentorship programs are structured is no pun intended, but I call it the four S system. So first we look at the structure of your business. What is your business model? How do you get clients? How do you pay people? Do they get paid for services, et cetera, et cetera? So what is the structure of your business? Then we look at the systems in your business. Do you have any? Um, Do you have some? Are they fully built out? Are they followed by everyone? Then we look at the strategy, okay? We look at your strategy and we, once we get your structure fixed and your systems fixed, we go to a strategy and then finally sustainability. So we make sure that all of these things are sustainable now and into the future. So one of the first things included in structure is how we look at payroll. And so oftentimes many people come into this business and the truth is they cannot be profitable because of the pay structure they have in their business. And take a little sip of coffee. Okay, so now that is not, to say that I think that we should not pay our team well. That's not it at all. In fact, I have people on my team, instructors, Pilates instructors, that make high five figures, and some of them might even cross the six-figure mark, okay? These are full-time instructors. They teach 30 hours a week or so. They get full-time benefits, and they're making in $90,000 to $100,000 a year, maybe high 80,000. So I can still pay my team like well and treat them well and have a financially solvent business. All right. So we really oftentimes as, especially as female entrepreneurs in this industry, I think we find ourselves at like the intersection of passion and what we want to do and what we think is right. And sustainability, business sustainability. And so I say there's like studio smart and then there's business smart and they're not mutually exclusive. So our dedication really to fostering a healthy lifestyle for our clients is unquestionable. We all, that's what we want to do. That's what we, that's what we get into this business for, right? And at the same time, we have to ensure that our business thrives financially because if we are not profitable, profitable is not a dirty word. If we do not have money in the bank, we will cease to operate. And in that case, you don't have a job, your team doesn't have a job, and you can't help the clients that you are so passionate about helping, okay? So a key piece of this puzzle is how we set up our pay structures and how we balance between being competitive um, in compensation and maintaining profitability. And it's crucial for long-term success and sustainability that you have this figured out. And it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes it could take a year, sometimes it could take two years, sometimes it could take three years. But if you know you're moving in the right direction, There are very specific things that you can do to make sure that you're ensuring that your business is profitable. 
Okay. One of the things we want to do is we really want to understand like what your current pay structure is and how it's affecting the financial health of your business. So it really, we, I talk about this all the time. It's important to plan. It's important to forecast. It's important to set your goals. So what type of financial targets are you trying to hit this year, next year, five years from now? You have to know where you're headed in order to really be able to set the plan for how you're going to get there. If you don't know where you're going, if you're going to start a trip and you don't know where you're going, how do you know if you're going to go north, south, east, or west? If you know that you're going to California, well, then you can decide, do I want to get there by plane? Do I want to get there by train? Do I want to get there by car? Do I want to take a scenic route? Do I want to get there the fastest way I can? Or do I want to get there the least expensive way that I can? But at least you know the direction in which you're going. So it's important to understand that. And it's also important to understand your budget so that you can set up the right type of pay structures in conjunction with your expenses, with your profit goals, with your um, pricing, et cetera. So how do we do this? Okay. So the one thing is you have to analyze what your overall expenditure is. So how much do you pay in rent? How much do you pay in um, utilities? How much do you pay your support staff? How much do you pay your managers? You really have to look at enti in its entirety, all of your monthly expenses in order to determine what the right pricing is for your business and pay system is for your business. Now, I always recommend that people come on as employees. Um, in California, pretty much everyone has to be employed. New York is another state that has very strong labor laws. In Florida, it's the wild, wild west. However, businesses really are like the IRS, the government is really cracking down on who can be labeled as an independent contractor versus employee. Now, if we do at Pilates in the Grove have a couple independent contractors on our team. This is a completely separate episode. I've done a lot of episodes about this. So you can go back and look in the podcast about independent contractors versus employees. But if someone is on your team that's an independent contractor, I recommend, we recommend that they start, the percentage to them starts at about 40, 45%. Okay. It's not 60%. It's not 70%. Okay. Because your overall payroll, overall payroll should be less than 50% of your overall income. So if you're generating $500,000 in revenue annually, your payroll, your total payroll should be less than 50%, $250,000 or less. And I'm going to show you in today's episode how it quickly gets above 50% and it makes it very, very difficult to be financially solvent. So the way that we look at things is we, and again, these are numbers. I, I do follow profit first, but not really profit first because you have to pay your expenses before you pay yourself sometimes. And it's not apples to apples all the time, but I do take um a little bit in terms of that for a service-based brick and mortar business where the owner is a employee of the business. So you're usually filing as an S corp and you are the on salary, you're on the payroll. Okay, so generally what we recommend, what I recommend is about 30% goes to the practitioner, okay? 40% goes to the overall operating expenses of the business. 15% goes to profit. Okay. 15, one, five percent goes to profit. So now you're left with another 15% that you can decide what you want to do with. Some of that is going to go to taxes. Some of that is going to go to miscellaneous um, we like to say that we're a 1% company, so we give back a percentage of our profits to um, other organizations where we donate. Some of it goes to bonuses for my team. So you kind of have like a rainy day front. Now, can you mess around with these? Can you say 
35% goes to my staff, 50% goes to operations, and then 15 goes to profit. Okay, you can say that. Yes, you can. That's why there's like a little wiggle room, which is why it's unique to you and your business, not to everyone's business as a whole. All right. So it first studio generating $500,000 in annual revenue. When you look at your payroll expenses, okay, they should break down as follows. So for your service providers, that's your instructors, your PTs, you know, massage therapists, if you have that 25 to 30% goes to them. So it's roughly $125,000 in salaries to your service providers. Support staff, you have an admin person, okay, about 10%. So $50,000, or maybe you have two ad, two um, support staff and they make, you know, $30,000 each. So you're at 60,000. Do you have a manager or are you the manager and you're paying yourself a salary of $75,000 a year, All right? So your total payroll expenses are about 50%, which is $250,000, which is gonna leave you $250,000 to run the rest of the business, pay your rent, pay your overhead, equipment, profit, et cetera. Okay. So another example. So if we go back to the example of the, and I'm going to talk mainly about employees here, because I think it's just easier to, to stick with one type of person employee. And this is the thing that I try to really encourage a lot of business owners to transition to having your people be employees. Um, so if you charge a hundred dollars for a session, 30 to $35 goes to the practitioner. Okay. Now I know what you're saying. You're like, I can't pay a PT 30, $35. They'll never work for me. Okay. Well then what do you need to do? You need to raise your prices. Okay. So if you want your PT to make $50 an hour, okay, you need to raise your prices. Okay. So if you want your PT to make $50 an hour, right, you need to have at least, at least $175. Let me say, let me just make sure that is right. Yeah. So like 170 to $175 is what you need to charge in order for, so if you're in a, in a, class setting then then and you're you need to may bring in at least 175 dollars so maybe it's 20 if you're if on average it's 25 dollars a person you need to have so many people make it 100 175 dollars okay and now this is what happens frequently what we hear is and i've heard this from instructors and maybe i even thought this when i was on the other side as an employee as an instructor well i do all the work I don't understand why I only get 30%. It's a valid question. There's no harm in them asking that question. So I am really, really transparent with my team. And so I say, you're absolutely right. And here's why. You get to keep 100% of your $35. So with my $65 that I keep, well, that Pilates in the Grove gets from that, that, we have to pay, excuse me, I have to pay the support staff, which equals out to um, $5 an hour based on like all of you that are working at this time. So that's an extra $5. So that goes into, so now I only have, I'm going to do this. So if I 65, so minus five, now I have $60. Okay. I also then have to pay for our manager who runs the business. And that equates to about $20 an hour. So now I have to take $20 off and that's $40, okay? And then I have to pay rent. So if I divide my total rent in the month by the total number of hours a month, it's another like $10, right? So now that's $10, okay? I have to pay taxes on that $100. So $100, so, you know, times... 30% is 30. Okay. So now I'm basically now, if I take that taxes and I 
divided by however many people are working at the time. So let's say that's another $10. So now I'm down at $20. Okay. So now I only have the studio only has $20 for which to pay the electricity and the marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how much it costs us to run the studio. Plus I pay your payroll taxes, right? So if you're paying, if I pay the instructor $35, right? And now it costs me to have payroll about $2 a person. So now that goes up to $37 at that. That's my carrying cost. We call that the carrying cost, okay? Now, if I pay for a health insurance plan, that's another addition on top of that. Now I pay about 15% of taxes. So if, if on a $35 an hour, they're going to pay like $3, I'm going to pay $3 also about to carry them as an employee. So now that's another three and a half dollars. So now we're up to $41. Okay. Plus what I have to pay in, let's see, there's the different type of taxes. So yeah, so now there you go. So we've had the payroll fee for the for like your software gusto. And now we have your payroll taxes that you pay for them, which is about 15%. Okay. So now here already, we went from a 30 to 35% split. And now we're over 40%. Okay. So now if it costs me about $41 for that employee, now I'm only left with $60, right? Which means that by the time I pay out all the stuff we have to pay for the studio, now we're at zero, which means there's no profit. If there is no profit in your business, there is no way for you to continue to grow and help more people and offer your team better compensation packages and things like paid time off and health plans, et cetera, et cetera. So this is why, and I know it sounds little, I know people are like, oh my gosh, 30%. Okay, but that's why then you have to look at your pricing and say, well, I can't charge $20 a class. I have to charge $30 a class. Or I can't charge $100 for a private. I have to charge $125 for a private because my team deserves a good amount of the right type of pay. And you as an owner deserve your salary and to have profit in your business. You do. And your clients deserve for you to have profit in your business so that you can buy new equipment when you want. You can add another reformer if you want. You can expand to a second location if you want. You can get recovery things like red light and saunas and all this stuff in your place to make the experience better for that. Okay. So how can you then learn how to implement good structured payroll tiers and incentives. So one of the things is really establish clear payroll tiers from the beginning. So you want to define where everyone is starting, why they're starting there, and very transparently and very clearly delineate how they can get to the next tier. So we, everyone starts at Pilates in the Grove at a certain hourly wage based on their number of years of experience, okay? And the additional, what's the word I'm trying to look, look for? I don't want to say really certifications, but it's also additional things that they can provide to the studio. So for example, if you're a physical therapist that's already dry needling certified, you qualify to be at a different tier. If you're a fitness instructor that's already Pilates certified as has been teaching for a certain amount of years, you start at one tier. If you're also specialized to treat um, pregnancy and postnatal or neurologic conditions, you will start at a different tier, okay? Then each and every person on my team gets evaluated randomly throughout the year in a very, very specific rubric, okay? It's a very specific. And I am going to go ahead and share this rubric with you so that you can see the type of things that we use at Pilates in the Grove. Now, this is another reason why if you're listening to this podcast, um, you might want to just go head over to my YouTube channel where you can watch it in real time. 
Okay. So I, this, when someone comes on board, they get um, evaluated with us every like two weeks and we go through this rubric and then it's every quarter. And then sometimes I just do it randomly. Okay. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you should be able to see this rubric. So basically, and my team knows this, this is what you're being evaluated on. So I watch a class, okay, or a private session or a um, physical therapy session. So this would be if you, this is the demonstration. So the trainer chooses exercises from a routine that's very basic and explains the muscle. That's the minimum that we are expecting. You get five points for that. If you demonstrate a more advanced exercise with a variation and then transition with a deeper understanding of those muscle groups and gave ver modifications for easier versions as well, you get 10 points. If you made use of your time before class or before the session, not only to demonstrate this exercise with variations and transitions, but you really explain deep muscle involvement. And if appropriate, they individually or to the group mentioned common modifications. They also use this time to set up a positive fun vibe. And the instructor was ready for class five minutes before it started and stayed until all clients left the classroom and picked up. That's the, that's the best expectation we can get. You get 15 points. Okay. So we go down, this is demonstration. We have how you incorporate new guests. So if there's no new guests, we just say not applicable. All right. This is the routine, like their programming, basically queuing, what type of queuing you use, corrections, modifications, connection, and your presence. Okay. So basically all of these things get you a certain amount of points. All of these things, essentials for, for sessions, get you a certain amount of points. Was the lighting appropriate? Was the sound appropriate? Did they instruct proper setup for the machine? Okay, did they give announcements before and after the class? Did they use our engagement strategies for follow-up? Did they, did they start the session on time and they end the session on time? Okay. And then we also have individual KPIs, which stands for key performance indicators that everyone gets. Is their class utilization at a certain number? They get five points. If it's at a higher number, they get 10 points. And if it's at a highest number, they get 15 points, all different things. Okay. So sub requiring sub, they have an opportunity to teach us in service or, or, um, workshop. They get points for that. They can teach a pop-up class. They get points for that. They can get ratings and reviews from their clients. They get points from that. So at the end, right, we add up all their points and here they get a total amount of points. Okay. Each of these numbers. So like from 90 to 120 is incorporate is affiliated with one pay rate. 121 to 180 is affiliated with another pay rate. Above 180 is affiliated with another pay rate. So they know very, very strategically how they can move from one pay rate to the next. And there are some things in here that are um, like teaching dominant. And then there's other things in here that they can do. They can get three reviews from people without having the most popular classes. They can do teach a pop-up class and that goes on the schedule without having the most popular classes. Okay. So there are things they can do. Now we also do um rate them on behaviors. So if you if you listen to the last podcast episode we did, we talk about behaviors that align with the best type of staff member and employee that we want. And so in addition to this score, because the truth is you can have an amazing instructor on your team that's like knocks it out of the park, but is a asshole and really is toxic for the culture. And we don't want to reward that. We want to reward behaviors as well as talent. So we also have a behavior that where they get graded on attending meetings, being engaged in meetings and what that specifically means, right? Um, being able to take feedback properly, how they get along with other team members. So we combine those points and it's very objective. So there's no like, oh, well, Krista likes her better. That's why she gets a raise, okay? And I don't give raises 
just because someone went and did another certification because you can have all the letters behind your name you want and still not be a great staff member or not be a great teacher. So we pay based on performance, not presence. Like you being here and doing the minimum basic skills, which is fine. You can teach well, you can do, but that's doing your job. That is your job. Okay. So if you want to get paid more, then you should be providing more. All right. It's the example of like, you know, the, why is it, why do they have more scholarships for the football team in college than they do for the volleyball team in college? Because football brings in more money. So if you want to make more money as a staff member, be more productive to the studio. That's the way to do it. It's just numbers. It's apples to apples. Okay. And you can do this also while ensuring the profitability and sustainability and financial solvency of your business. Okay. So you have very clear expectations of where everyone starts. You have very clear expectations and incentives of how they can get to the next level. Okay. And then you have regular performance reviews. I don't tell people when I'm going to go in and watch their class. I just show up. Okay. And you really should have short-term goals and long-term goals for people. And so sometimes if people say, well, you know, so-and-so over there is going to offer me $65. Okay. I get it. Okay. You can go work for them. I get it. Right. And this is why having a strong culture helps you to attract the good people. I can also say, yes, they might, but they're going to give you one hour of work. So if I can give you 30 hours of work, right, and in your group classes, you can make, you know, our top tiered instructors, and we have 10 reformers in one studio, they can make 80 to $90 an hour, still with our profit margin, okay? So if they make, let's even say they make $70 a class, and they make $40 a private, all right. But they get six hours in a day and they get three classes and three privates. Okay. So then on average, they're making, right? So if you take 70 times three, right? And then a 40 times three, that's 120. Okay. And then you divide it by six, they're making $55 an hour on average. And they're not having to travel. So I'm saving them time which is money to them um, by having to go to a bunch of different studios. So if you have someone that on average makes $55 an hour on average, okay, and they work six hours a day, five days a week times 30, okay, and they work, even say they take two weeks off, okay, so times 50, they're going to make $82,000 a year. not bad for a Pilates instructor. I mean, depending on where you live, but not bad. Right. And so this is a type of setup that has allowed us, right. It has allowed us to pay our team well, to give them lucrative careers with pay time off and, um, health benefits and maintain a 15% profit margin. We also give stipends for continuing education. So it is really, really important to balance profitability with compensation. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you look at your numbers and you realize, well, I can't be profitable with what I'm paying my instructors, then you have to make a change. Don't be pissed off at your instructors because you set up something that wasn't ideal for the business, okay? Make a change. You need to charge more or you need to cut expenses somewhere else, okay? And this is why 
inviting, attracting good clients. I mean, good staff members that are eager to grow, that are willing to work, that are willing to be teammates, that are, and being transparent with them as to, it costs us this much to run this studio. This is why I cannot at this point afford to pay you more. The more transparent you are with your team, the more they'll get on board with you and understand we're all moving in this direction together and, you know, doing something where you're giving back to the community. It's another way, like if we get to this amount of profit, we will give back, you know, $10,000 to an organization at the end of the year. That is a great incentive for people to say, you know, we'll get there. And we, as a, as a community, as a collective, will be able to give 10, 15, $20,000 back to local charities. So let's say this, if you are like, holy crap, I am in a bad position here and I don't know how to get out of it. One, you can set up a discovery call, not a discovery call. You can set up a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Okay. You can go visit my website, kristagurka.com. And you can go to the work with me page and set up a one-on-one -on -one call. And we can walk through some of your numbers and we can help you devise a plan for how you get out of this. Um, you can consider joining FitBiz Foundations or the Inner Circle, which really not in the Inner Circle, we not only look at your numbers, create spreadsheets, help you decide what you need to raise prices to. Okay, because raising them $5 might not make the difference. And then devising a very strategic plan for how you discuss this with your team and how you know how much this is going to cost you if you need to say transition people from contractors to employees, et cetera, et cetera. We really, really take you by the hand and walk you through this full process because it's not easy. It sucks. I'll be honest. It's not great. But if you want your business to be here five years from now and you want to help more clients and you want to have the right kind of people on your team, this is kind of what you signed up for when you signed up to be a business owner, these hard decisions. But it's crucial that you look at what you're paying your people and what you're charging and what your expenses are so that you can make sure you are in a spot where you are still financially solvent. Because like I said, if you're not and you have no profit to grow the business or in case the air conditioning breaks or there's a flood in your studio or our rent goes up every year, right? If you're not in a place for that to happen, you will close. And if you close, you have no staff. So they are making nothing now. You're not making anything and you you're not helping the clients, which is what you really, really are here to do. So I am on a mission to transform the boutique fitness and wellness industry, one female business owner at a time by putting more profit in your pocket and more salary in your team's pocket. That's what I'm on a mission to do. And if you want to get on that mission with me, if you want to be on the bus with me, all right, so that we are changing this industry, leading from the front then I encourage you to visit my website, kristagurka.com, check out all the programs I have, or even schedule to work one-on-one -on -one with me, okay? I also do 15-minute discovery calls free. So if you're interested in one of the programs, we can set one of those up so you can see if I'm the right person to work for you with you. And you can always DM me over on Instagram. That's where I hang out. All right. So this was a lot of talking about numbers. I know this is overwhelming. Maybe save this episode so you can come back and listen to it again. And until next time, my friends, bye for now. <laughs>